Hello everyone! Welcome back to our math class. Today's lesson is about finding the value of a variable in a given equation. So first, let's learn some basic concepts. Let's start with an equation. Recall that an equation is a mathematical statement that states two expressions are equal in value. When an equation contains a variable, the value of the variable that makes the statement true is called the solution of the equation. For example, if we have the equation x minus 12 is equal to 25, try to think of a number that when subtracted by 12 will give us 25. What did you get? Okay, good. So here we have x is 37. 37 minus 12 will give us 25. Therefore, 37 is the solution of this equation x minus 12 is equal to 25. Another concept which we need to understand is the properties of equality. First, the addition property of equality. This property states that if a is equal to b, a here represents the expression on the left side of the equation, and b represents the right side or the expression on the right side of the equation. Then a plus c is equal to b plus c, meaning to say if you add a number on the left side of our equation, and add that same number on the right side of the equation, then the left side and the right side of our equation are still equal. For example, x minus 12 is equal to 25. How will we use this addition property of equality to find the value of x? First is, our goal is to isolate x on the left side of our equation, meaning to say we'll have to eliminate this minus 12 or negative 12 on the left side of our equation. And how will we do that? We can simply add the additive inverse of negative 12. When you say additive inverse, that is the opposite of negative 12. And the opposite of negative 12 is positive 12. So if we add its additive inverse, which is positive 12, negative 12 plus 12 will be equal to 0. Since we added positive 12 on the left side of the equation, we should also add 12 to the right side of the equation to make sure that the left side and the right side are still equal. So now, let's solve. We have here negative 12 plus 12 is equal to 0, so we'll have x alone on the left side of our equation. Then 25 plus 12 will give us 37. Another example, if we have x plus 12 is equal to 25. Again, our goal is to isolate x on the left side of the equation. And for us to do that, we'll have to eliminate positive 12 on this side. And for us to do that, we'll have to add its additive inverse. The additive inverse of positive 12 is a negative 12. So that means we'll add negative 12 to this side because 12 plus negative 12 is equal to 0. Therefore, we'll also add negative 12 to the right side to make sure that both sides are still equal. Now, looking at positive 12, plus negative 12, you can just simply think of it as subtracting 12 to positive 12. So we can write it as x plus 12 minus 12. And on the other side, we can also think of adding negative 12 as subtracting 12 to 25. Okay, so you can just simply erase this part and have it as negative 12. So if you have positive 12, just subtract negative 12. If it's positive 15, then subtract 15. Okay, so again, 12 minus 12 is equal to 0, so we'll have x alone on the left side of the equation. Then 25 minus 12 will give us 13. Another property of equality is the multiplication property of equality. This property states that if a is equal to b, then a times c is equal to b times c, meaning to say if we have a number here and multiply that to a, which is the left side of our equation, and multiply that same number on the right side of our equation, then both sides will still be equal. For example, if you have 2x equals 30, how will we use the multiplication property of equality to find the value of x? So again, our goal is to isolate the variable x on the left side of the equation. We are only looking for x, not 2x. So for us to do that, we'll have to multiply both sides, 
by the multiplicative inverse of 2. Okay, what do we mean by multiplicative inverse? For example, if you have 2 thirds, the multiplicative inverse of 2 thirds is 3 over 2. So when you multiply 2 thirds by its multiplicative inverse 3 halves, that will be equal to 6 over 6 or simply 1. So if you multiply 2x by its multiplicative inverse, which is 1 half, we will also multiply the right side by 1 half. 1 half times 2 will give us 2 over 2 or simply 1. So we will have 1x on the left side of the equation. Now remember that all variables has a numerical coefficient 1. Okay? So there's no need for us to write 1 here. It's understood that if you only have a variable here like this one x, it's automatic that it has a numerical coefficient of 1. Then we'll have 30 times 1 half is equal to 30 over 2 or that is equal to 15. Now, you can think of multiplication property of equality as simply dividing both sides by the numerical coefficient of our variable. For example, if we have 3x equals 27, since the numerical coefficient of x is 3, you can just simply divide both sides by 3. So 3 over 3 is equal to 1. We can cancel it out and we will be left with x alone on the left side of the equation. And 27 over 3 is equal to 9. But again, take note that this division is actually multiplication property of equality. What we actually did here is we multiplied both sides by the multiplicative inverse of 3. Okay, but you can think of it as dividing both sides by the numerical coefficient of the variable given. Another property which we need to take note of is the property of operation. One of the properties of operation, which is the distributive property of multiplication. In the distributive property of multiplication, if you have A times the sum of B and C, it is the same as getting the sum of A times B and A times positive C. Okay. What do I mean by that? Say, for example, we have 3 times the sum of Q and 15 is equal to 42. Following the GEMDAS rule, what we need to do is to add first the expression inside the grouping symbol. However, since we do not know the value of Q, we cannot add it yet to 15. So it's impossible to add Q and 15, then multiply it to 3. So what we will do instead is we multiply 3 to Q and multiply 3 to positive 15. So 3 times Q will give us 3Q and 3 times positive 15 will give us positive 45. And this will be equal to 42. Then, following the properties of equality, we will have 3Q plus 45 minus 45 is equal to 42 minus 45. So we'll have here 45 minus 45 is equal to 0. So 3q is equal to 42 minus 45 is equal to negative 3. Then, for us to find the value of q, we'll have to multiply both sides by the multiplicative inverse of 3 or simply divide both sides by 3. So we'll have q is equal to negative 1. Let's have some more examples. But first, let's go back to our first example earlier. x minus 12 is equal to 25. Okay, if we will look at its solution, we have x minus 12 plus 12 is equal to 25 plus 12. Then we got x is equal to 37. Now let us focus on this part of our solution. Okay, since negative 12 plus 12 is equal to 0, we can simply write it as x is equal to 25 plus 12. So, if you will take a closer look at this part of our solution, it seems like we just simply transferred the negative 12 from the left side to the right side of our equation. And by doing so, it changes the sign to its opposite, which is positive 12. So this, uh, this transferring 
of a term from left side to the right side of the equation and vice versa is what we call as transposition in mathematics. But take note that this transposition originated from the properties of equality which we talked about earlier. Now let's try to use this transposition in our next examples. Let us find the value of p in this equation 6p plus 11 equals 83. Again, our goal is to isolate the variable on the left side of the equation. So what we need to do first is to eliminate the positive 11. So let us transfer this or transpose it to the other side of our equation. So we'll have 6p is equal to 83. Then this, since this is positive 11, when we transpose it to the right side, it will become negative 11. Then 6p is equal to 83 minus 11. That is equal to 72. Again, we only need to find p. So we have to eliminate this numerical coefficient 6 here by dividing both sides by 6. Okay. Since the numerical coefficient of p is 6, we divide both sides by 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1, so we'll have p here. And 72 divided by 6 will give us 12. Therefore, the value of p is 12. Next. Find the value of the variable in 3m minus m is equal to 76. First, let us combine like terms. 3m minus m will give us 2m. Then we'll have 76 on the right side. What we need to find is only the value of m. Therefore, we have to divide both sides by 2 since 2 is the numerical coefficient of m. And 2 divided by 2 is equal to m. And 76 divided by 2 is equal to 38. So m is equal to 38. Another example, 7y minus 2y plus 10 is equal to 60. Again, let us combine first like terms. 7y minus 2y will give us 5y. Then we'll have plus 10 is equal to 60. Okay, let's isolate y on the left side by transposing first the positive 10 to the right side. So we'll have 5y is equal to 60. Since this is positive 10 on the right, it will become negative 10. So we'll have 5y is equal to 50. Then we divide both sides by 5. We'll have y is equal to 10. Another example, 1 half a plus 5 equals 20. Again, we transpose first positive 5 on the right side. So we'll have 1 half a is equal to 20 minus 5. That will give us 1 half a is equal to 50. Now we have to eliminate 1 half by multiplying both sides by its numerical or multiplicative inverse which is 2 over 1 or simply 2. So we also multiply the right side by 2. 2 times 1 half will give us 2 over 2 or simply 1. Okay, then we will have 1a on the left side. 15 times 2 is equal to 30. You can also think of it as 1 half a can be written as a over 2 is equal to 15. Okay, to eliminate this over 2, we simply have to multiply it to the right side of our equation. So we'll be left with a alone on the left side, then 2 times 15 will give us 30. Okay, so we'll just arrive at the same answer. For our last example, we have 3 times the difference of z and 8 equals 96. Again, we cannot simplify yet z minus 8 because we do not know the value of z. Therefore, we'll have to distribute the 3 to z and to negative 8. So 3 times z is equal to 3z, and 3 times negative 8 is equal to negative 24, and that will be equal to 96. Then we transpose negative 24 to the right side, therefore we'll have 96 plus 24. 3z now is equal to 120, and to find for the value of z, we divide both sides by 3. So 3 over 3 is equal to 1. So we will be left with 1z on the left side. Then 120 divided by 3 is equal to 40. Therefore, z is equal to 40. And that's it for our lesson for today. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned a lot.